This video will be on the climate section in the geography um, syllabus, focusing mainly on um, mid-latitude cyclones, as well as a very small section just explaining some synoptic weather maps as well as the weather stations found on these maps. So if we look up uh, if we look at synoptic weather maps, information is gathered from weather stations, uh, radios, and satellites. Sorry, I apologize for the spelling mistake. Um, if we look at isobars, these are obviously lines joining places of equal pressure. They're a very dominant feature on a synoptic map um, and can be used for a number of things. You know, at face value, they tell you the pressure, but once you start to study geography, you can tell things such as a low pressure, what does that indicate, what's coming because of the low pressure, etc. Then just in terms of, and please note that these diagrams only apply to the southern hemisphere. Um, they, are opposite, they are opposite in the northern hemisphere. So if we look at a typical high pressure cell or an anticyclone in the um, southern hemisphere, wind always moves out of a high pressure as shown by the direction of the arrows as well as in a, as well as in an anti-clockwise direction so like that uh, easy way to remember this is high pressure anti-cyclone anti-clockwise if you know what i mean then if we look at a typical low pressure in the southern hemisphere low pressure air always moves into a low pressure because wind travels from a high pressure to a low pressure along the pressure gradient Look at a low pressure cyclone um, pressure system. Wind moves into the system and is always in a clockwise direction. Then, um, not required um, for your final examinations, but just some more useful information. Very useful to note that your polar easterlies um, transition into your westerly winds and then your tropical easterly winds. And along the equator, you get your um, intertropical convergence zone. Uh, a lot of um, cumulonimbus clouds developing there um, with some severe thunderstorms and permanent thunderstorms. Then if we look at a typical weather station model, uh, this is what it will look like. So we'll just start out here. The top number on the right hand side is the temperature at that time. 24, um, that'll represent the dew point temperature at that time. And as you can see, because these temperatures are relatively um, close together, there's only four degrees difference between them. We've got quite a lot of cloud cover. The cloud cover is represented by um, the black dwarf area in the um, circle. So for this instance, you could say that the cloud cover is about uh, two thirds. Then if we look at on the left hand side, um, this is the weather condition at the, mo at the moment. So in this instance, it's thunderstorms. Um, and then if you look down here, here's just another couple of symbols. So rain is a dot, drizzle, shower, snow, hail, fog, and thunderstorms. Then the last couple of things, this line extending off here shows wind direction. Remember that you always wind is always shown as coming into the station model. So how I like to think of it, is that these lines indicating wind speed are like tail feathers, so they represent the back of the, um, like the arrow. Um, so the arrow is coming in. So in this instance, you could say that the wind is coming from a southwesterly direction. So it is a southwesterly wind, because remember, winds are always named from where they're coming from. Then the last thing is wind speed. Big line represents um, ten knots, and small lines. Um, represent five knots. Then if we move on to focusing specifically on mid-latitude cyclones, if we look at some of the characteristics of mid-latitude cyclones, they are systems where cold polar and warm subtropical air masses meet, forming a front. Mid-latitude cyclones have a cold and a warm front. Pressure at the center is about 996 hectopascals. The diameter of a typical mid-latitude cyclone is between 1,500 and 3,000 kilometers. They usually form in families. A few form together and travel close to one another. Crucial to know this, that they move from west to east. They travel at between 50 and 60 kilometers per hour, and they last between 4 and 14 days. 
Um, as we can see from this map here, uh, your mid-latitude cyclones typically form in your northern regions as well as your very southern regions. And obviously these shift according to whether it is summer or winter in both the north and south hemispheres respectively. Then just about um, mid-latitude cyclones formation. Uh, if we look at the initial stage, weather, weather patterns associated with the initial stage, got some cloudy weather and some rain due to rising air which cools and condenses. So you can see the polar easterlies meeting the westerly winds along the polar front. Um, then we look at the mature stage, so that's just a bit of an explanation and what it will look like. So 24 hours occurs 24 hours after the initial stage, it develops to the mature stage, the wave increases as warm air moves further into the mass of cold air. So if we go back to this, your warm westerly winds, that's why they're shown in the red color, extend more into your um, mass of cold air, which is your polar easterlies. Then a warm and cold sector is established. Two fronts develop marking the boundary between cold and air masses, cold and warm air masses. And another important thing to note is that the front takes its name from the air mass behind it. What I mean by that is that if the warm front is over here, it obviously um, symbolizes the front of um, the warm sector, so the beginning of the warm sector, which occurs behind it. The cold front obviously um, sim um, symbolizes the cold sector, which is directly behind it. Then just in terms of a bit of notation on maps, cold fronts are always marked with these triangles. Um, and warm fronts are marked with semicircles. A nice way to remember it is cold fronts are more angry and fierce, so you could almost see these as teeth. And then again, always move from a west um, from west to east. Then if we look at a cross, so another thing to note, if you're asked to draw a plan view or an over like an overview of a mid-latitude cyclone in its mature stage, this is the diagram you would draw. If you are asked to draw a cross section through a mid-latitude cyclone during its mature stage, you would draw something more along the lines of this. You can see your cold front, your warm front, cumulonimbus clouds developing along your cold front, your alto stratus, nimbus stratus clouds developing here along your warm front. Very nice diagram and one that they definitely will ask you in your final examinations. So air rises along the warm front, the warm air of the warm sector rises above the cold air ahead of it, forming the warm front. Air rises along the cold front as the heavier colder air behind the cold front, so he has this heavier colder air behind the cold front, wedges in underneath the warm air ahead of it. Weather form a uh, bit of weather patterns associated with this movement. Rising air along the front leads to condensation and cloud formation as well as rain. Rising air causes pressure at the center to drop. Then when the um, mid-latitude cyclone begins to dissipate, it enters a stage known as the occluded stage. Cold air behind the front travels faster than the air in the warm sector. The cold front catches the warm front. The warm air is forced to rise, leaving a small warm sector on the ground. Cold and warm fronts are now joined. Um, in terms of weather patterns, widespread rain now occurs as the warm air rises, cools and condenses, forming rain. Then if we just look at our plan view of an occluded front, we can see here that our cold front and warm front have, have met here, which becomes the occluded front. You've got your cold front still extending out, your warm front extending there. Then your last stage of a mid-latitude cyclone is your dissipating stage. The occlusion pushes warm sector air upward, the warm sector is above the ground and there is no longer warm air at the surface. No cold or warm air fronts are present when the um, system becomes fully occluded and eventually the low pressure center is surrounded by cold air and the system dissipates. Weather patterns associated with this stage, high gusts of wind, very cold winds on the ground. Then if we look at um, bit more detail into the weather patterns regarding warm fronts and cold fronts. If we look at warm fronts, warm fronts cover large areas. Warm moist air from the warm sector rises over the cold air ahead of it. The air cools and condenses resulting in cloud formation. This then results in soft rain falling due to the gentle upliftment of air along the front. 
as the warm front passes, temperature increases as, warm, as the warm sector arrives. The pressure decreases due to rising air in the warm sector. Uh, the humidity also increases as the warm air holds more moisture. Then another important process um, is the process of backing, which occurs in the southern hemisphere and veering which occurs in the northern hemisphere although backing is the more important one because we are in the southern hemisphere this is basically the wind changing direction from a northwesterly wind to a southwesterly wind as a mid-latitude cyclone passes over south africa the reason we have sketched in a northeasterly wind here is because more often than not um, before a cold front and I will get to it later, berg winds occur and they are commonly uh, northeasterly, north to northeasterly winds. These then shift into uh, northwesterly winds, strong northwesterly winds. As the front is making its way over, it shifts then to a southwesterly wind. Typical weather associated with cold fronts. The cold front is much steeper, leading to a more rapid upliftment of air more um, severe clouds, cumulonimbus clouds form heavy rain and severe thunderstorms. The area of rainfall is smaller than the warm front, although um, more water falls in that smaller area, which can lead to flash floods. And then uh, area of rainfall smaller than the warm front, behind and in the front of the cold front. Then if we look at the weather associated with um, as the cold front passes, Temperatures obviously decrease as the cold air arrives. Snowfall may occur on higher ground, such as some. That's why some of our mountains in the Western Cape experience snow um, when these systems pass over the south of South Africa. Pressure begins to increase. Humidity decreases because the cold air now dominates the system, and cold air obviously holds less water than warm air. The wind backs, which I just spoke about earlier. Then weather associated with occluded fronts and a little bit more about occluded fronts. Occlusion occurs when a cold front catches the warm front. The cold air behind the cold front meets the cold air ahead of the warm front. These two cold air masses are not the same temperature. The difference in temperature causes the formation of two different types of occlusions. You get a cold front occlusion and a warm front occlusion. A cold front occlusion is when cold air behind the cold front is colder than the cold air ahead of the warm front. A warm front occlusion is when the cold air ahead of the warm front is colder than the air behind the cold front. We look at a cold front occlusion, very nice diagram to remember. Remember your warm air, your air in front of the warm front is warmer than your air behind the cold front. Nice diagram to illustrate it here. And uh, the cold air has caught the warm front causing air in the warm sector to rise. The cold front touches the ground and the warm sector is lifted off the ground. The cold air behind the cold front undercuts the cold air ahead of the warm front, forcing it to rise. We get, as a result, we get cold, wet conditions. Look at a warm front occlusion. Remember, your air in front of the warm front is colder than your air behind the cold front. The cold front has caught the warm front, causing an air in the warm sector to rise. The warm front touches the ground, while the cold front is now lifted off the ground. This less cold air, or the cooler air behind the cold front, is lighter than the colder air ahead of the warm front, and therefore rises above the colder air. Cool, wet conditions can be experienced as a result. That concludes the video for mid-latitude cyclones. Thank you very much.